okay one thing you need to understand servo motors are very good in position control applications dc motors are good in rpm control applications wherever we need position control applications there we need there we use servo motors wherever we need rpm control applications there we use dc motor so where we use position control applications means whenever you have a soldering machine right right in your mobile phone there are more than 30 40 integrated circuits are soldered so those soldering are machine soldering as we all know very well because human being cannot able to do which that much accuracy so every ic every resistor every transistor is kept in some millimeter accuracy by using servo motor based arms their millimeter movement every millimeter movement is concentrated much even a 0.5 millimeter error comes one resistor will um, be kept over the other resistor so that is the big mistakes so even a 0.5 millimeter will become a big disaster and it go for uh, uh, soldering our mobile phone uh, pcbs so it is mandatory for us to do the position control as best as possible so for that this rotary encoders are very much useful okay so i will ask few questions few of you can answer quickly we have a rotary encoder which produces one pulses per revolution i will show you some of those uh, thing right so this is the rotary encoder which you have in our cros washing machines etc which do not have any uh, potentiometer every rotation will have produce some pulses based on the pulses we can able to identify the speed and direction of rotation and uh, this is the this kind of rotary encoder as you see in the screen this kind of rotary encoders are connected along with the motor so which says that 400 ppr what do you mean by 400 ppr 400 pulse per revolution okay so 400 pulse per revolution something like that so there is something like another uh, autonics uh, encoder incremental encoder we used to say it is incremental encoder and uh, you can see there are so many um, encoders right which are available this is connected to the shaft of the motor which will rotate along with the shaft and which will help us to produce the number of pulses as per the thing so these are the knob type of rotary encoders are used in the oscilloscopes are used in the function generators smart function generators smart oscilloscopes and uh, washing machines and the smart electronic appliances uses only uh, rotary encoders for the control instead of potentiometers nowadays so that you need to understand most of you have a front loading washing machine and a modern washing machine means if you rotate the knob you can feel the tick 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 sounds so you can feel a uh, very good uh, comfortness so this is just because of uh, rotary encoders like this as you see in the screen so that is what you have seen in the videos right that is what you can see in the videos you have seen in the videos so this is the rotary encoder the centrical type of rotary encoder which are connected to the Uh, which are connected to the motors shaft which produces the pulses as per the requirement so as you see here in the first diagram it says that it uh, produces 400 pulses per revolution something like that okay so we'll do some analysis which will be easy for our discussion so let us take uh, um, you can quickly respond that's very important the question is for every individual again i am telling don't wait for your friend to answer so let us say for one revolution if it produces one pulse what is the number of degree it can measure for one revolution it produces one pulse means how much angle it can measure is the question one revolution it produces one pulse means it can measure how much angle i am asking if one pulse comes means the wheel has turned how much angle for one revolution okay it is 360 degree very good for two if one for one revolution it produces two pulses means for two revolution so for one revolution it produces two pulses means so for 180 degree accuracy for one revolution for one revolution it produces four pulses means 90 degree one revolution eight pulses means one revolution 60 pulses means one revolution 60 pulses means 
how much angle for every pulse how much angle one revolution 60 pulses means how much angle it will rotate 60 degree correct so all our wall clocks all our wall clocks and wrist watches second needle we have a second needle minute needle and hour needle every second needle in our wall clock veetla apdi mele wall clock irundha apdi paarenga annan paarenga kaiyila watch kattirundinga watch paarenga all wall clocks are all the wrist watches second needle will rotate 6 degree so 60 such 6 degree is 1 minute right so this second wheel is connected to the minute wheel as a gear wheel mechanism so this one revolution of the second wheel due to the mechanical arrangement of the gear mechanism the minute wheel will rotate 6 degree that means one step hope you understand this is very interesting right so if there are 60 such pulses coming means then we can say 6 degree if it produces 400 pulse per revolution then how much angle it will turn it can measure this is the rotary encoder which rises about 1540 when it rotates when it produces 400 ppr ppr means pulses per revolution then how much angle what is accuracy 400 means what will be the accuracy 60 means 6 degree 60 pulses means 6 degree so similarly if it produces 400 pulses per revolution means approximately 0.9 degree right if it is 360 means 1 degree right so 0.9 degree even 1 degree rotation it can yeah even 0.9 degree rotation it can able to identify so there are rotary encoders which can give maximum 8000 pulses per revolution you see you must understand there are some rotary encoders which produces 8000 revolutions that is 8000 pulses per revolution where in one revolution you are able to get 8000 pulses so maybe you can say that is 0.1 degree 0.2 degree 0.3 degree rotations right so that much accuracy you can able to get in the servo motors you must understand servo motors are very good in position control so to change the position we have to use the pulse width modulation only okay so by increasing the width it turns in the clockwise direction by decreasing the width it turns in the anti clockwise direction so the position control is done by the pwm whether it has turned to the expected angle is observed by this ppr from the rotary encoders okay so for the pick and place machines for the pick and place machines we use only servo motors wherever we use pick and place machines or wherever there is an automation which is used for picking and placing which may be a small objects or it may be large objects wherever we use pick and place machines they are mostly we use servo motors so all the industries mostly uses pick and place machines they use only servo motors with rotary encoders as you see here how to ensure that the machine has turned the right angle expected angle without any error means with the help of only rotary encoders we have to measure so rotary encoders are very much helpful in finding the position of the servo motor in the case of servo motors in the case of dc motor it is helpful in finding the speed and the direction of rotation as you have seen in this videos which was explained very clearly okay so we hope you have understood servo motors are good in position control dc motors are good in rpm control that is the only thing you need to understand stepper motor you do not need any feedback the whenever you utter the word stepper motor in the open loop itself it can give the accurate results you don't want to measure good example is your second needle several times you have discussed right second wheel in our uh, uh, wall clock is a good example for stepper motor there is no feedback mechanism to say that every second whether it has turned 60 degree or not it is not necessary because stepper motors are very accurate in open loop itself but servo motors and dc motors are not that much accurate because it has some amount of inertia and so many other things hence there is a need for a closed loop mechanism for bringing the closed loop mechanism we need rotary encoders that is the moral of the story hope you have understood this let's take your vehicle let us assume one revolution makes the wheel rotate 1 meter so let us say five pulses per revolution for our computation convenience for every pulse it has travel 20 cm in one second if your vehicle crosses 100 meters then your vehicle is traveling 360 km per hour okay assuming that if uh, 25 1 meter one pulses means for for understanding 25 meters per second means uh, 25 into 3600 am i right hmm 
Yes, 25 into 3600, you can say 90 kilometer per hour. We talk about anti-lock braking system, right? Which is full of electronics, right? When we talk about anti-lock braking system, definitely with the help of real speed sensors, which is a closed loop system, which can identify vehicle is traveling in 90 kilometer per hour. And when the driver applies the brake, immediately the vehicle has to stop. But the vehicle will lead to skidding. So apply the brake and release the brake in milliseconds interval. So the wheel will rotate and stop, rotate and stop at least 100 times per second. So it will reduce the stopping distance as well as it will give the steerability of the vehicle, right? So for an anti-lock braking system, for an electronic stability program, this kind of feedback mechanism is very important. All our speedometer is a closed loop control system. So by looking at the quarter, uh, rotary encoder, you can identify it gives the number of pulses placed on the teeth. The pulses may be uh, 10 pulses per revolution, 20 pulses per revolution, 100 pulses per revolution, 400 pulses per revolution. The rest of the thing, thing is computation. Now you come to this uh, data sheet of this TiVo microcontroller. Here we have a quadrature encoder interfacing. So if you go to the block diagram, so in the page number 48, we have the block diagram. We are interested to see only this quadrature encoder interfacing, which is called as motion control peripheral. So we have seen about the PWM part. And here you have a two quadrature encoder interfacing all put together forms a motion control peripherals. So this gives the output and because of the presence of quadrature encoder interfacing, so the PWM output is connected to the motor. From the motor uh, shaft, we have the rotary encoder. Rotary encoder output is connected to the quadrature encoder interfacing. So, so based on the input from the quadrature encoder, it is something like a closed loop control system, right? So the error signal we can identify, right? So based on the error signal, we can control the pulse width, pulse width model, pulse width in such a way that it meets the expected RPM in case of DC motor, expected position in terms of servo motor. So based on the input from the rotary encoder, so quadrature encoder interfacing will determine the current uh, position uh, with respect to servo motor or the current uh, RPM with respect to the DC motor. Based on the current RPM, it compared with the set RPM, if the RPM is low, PWM will get increased. And if the RPM is high, PWM will get reduced. Based on that, you can get a very wonderful closed loop control system, which is very much important for an adaptive cruise control. In a car, you have something like ACC, adaptive cruise control. You know, how many, how many of you know this adaptive cruise control? So in a highway, in a lane, you can make the vehicle to travel in 80 km per hour. And if you put it in the cruise mode, that is cruise control mode, we don't want to keep our leg in the accelerator pedal or the clutch pedal, etc. Simply, we can uh, remove the leg from the accelerator pedal or brake pedal or uh, clutch pedal. So, vehicle will automatically uh, travel in 80 km per hour. It is cruise control. So, there is something like ACC, adaptive cruise control, where if there is a vehicle, front vehicle which is traveling in 70 km per hour means, so our vehicle will travel in 70 km per hour. If the vehicle removes from that lane, automatically it will accelerate to 80 km per hour. Okay. So, for the cruise control, this will be very much useful. For adaptive cruise control, we need a radar signal to identify uh, the front vehicle distance. Okay, So cruise control can be done just like that uh, by using the uh, quadrature encoder interfacing and the engine control mechanism. But for adaptive cruise control, we need a radar signal to identify the front vehicle display distance. Based on that, you have to maintain the safe distance between the front vehicle and our vehicle and a lot more. So everywhere there is a need for closed loop. So wherever with respect to the motor, the closed loop is achieved by using the quadrature encoder interfacing that you have to appreciate. So which is the 21st chapter in the Tiva microcontroller data sheet. So the quadrature encoder interfacing is this. Quickly we'll refresh about this. So the Tiva microcontroller has this quadrature encoder facility where we can able to produce a closed loop control system. Don't always think that only in the vehicle we need a closed loop control system. Even in your uh, hard disk okay only if you have a solid state drive hard disk there is no rotating part but uh, conventional hard disk has a uh, disk mechanism where there is a dc motor which rotates the disk and there is a servo motor which is the head so dc motor is nothing in the hard disk dc motor is nothing but uh, rotates the disk and the servo motor which is positioning the head the head position head movement in the disk is the servo motor and the disc rotation is from the DC motor. So all our hard disk has head and a disc. Disc rotation is with the help of a DC motor and the 
head head position movement in terms of millimeter or micrometer movement in the head movement in the hard disk is done by the servo motor so every hard disk has a servo motor and dc motor both are controlled by the pulse width modulation and some kind of rotary encoder some kind of quadrature encoder interfacing okay so some kind of tiva microcontrollers are sitting inside the hard disk which controls the speed of the hard disk as well as which reads the corresponding data from the corresponding position from the head so for that servo motors are used to position the head to the right place which can reach the data from that particular location and then we are able to read the corresponding value maybe i am clicking the pdf so pdf is in some other location so when moment i click the pdf that signal will go to the servo motor and uh, dc motor so based on that it will servo motor will rotate in some speed and dc motor uh, sorry dc motor will rotate in some speed servo motor will uh, go to the exact position and then it reads the value and then it brings the quadrature encoder interface in front of the screen so not only in vehicle not only in vehicle automation even in hard disks even in printers everywhere there is a need for quadrature encoder interfacing rotary encoders for a closed loop control system that you need to celebrate okay so rest of the thing we can able to complete quickly so by celebrating the application this is very interesting where you can able to understand so quickly i'll read out so the quadrature encoder interfacing also known as two channel incremental encoder converts the linear displacement into pulse signal as we all know by monitoring both the number of pulses and the relative phase of the two signals you can track the position direction of rotation and speed that's a very important right we can track the position in case of servo motor that's very important you can track the position in case of servo motor and the direction of rotation both in case of servo motor and dc motor when you talk about the dc motor you can measure the speed all thing can be done by using the quadrature encoder interfacing which gets the input from the rotary encoder in addition the third channel or index signal can be used to reset the position counter there is another button uh, called reset button that you can able to reset the um, count value okay so the tm4c 123 gigahertz 6 pm microcontroller includes two quadrature encoder interfacing modules each quadrature interfacing module interprets the code produced by the quadrature encoder wheel to integrate the position over time to integrate the position over the time that, that determines the direction of the rotation okay so position over time determines the direction of rotation in addition it can capture the running estimate of the velocity of the encoder wheel in addition it can capture the running estimate of the velocity of the encoder wheel okay so in pwm we have done something like uh, compare module so there is a compare register whenever the timer value matches the compare register it produces a transition in the pin like that we have studied whenever there is a transition in the pin right whenever there is a transition in the pin from 1 to 0 or when there is a transition in the pin from 0 to 1 timer is keep on rotating right you can see timer 1 lower order a bit timer 1 higher order a bit timer is keep on counting like how do we do in the pwm right so but whenever transition comes from 1 to 0 whenever transition come from 1 to 0 at the time of transition what is the timer value that will be captured by the capture register this is called as capture register now you have to understand it's very important right now you have to understand let us go for the 8050 that's why we are having 8050 as a reference wherever there is a, a complexity comes then we go for 8050 and we can celebrate it much better say for example our clock frequency is 1 megahertz okay our clock frequency is 1 megahertz and whenever the first falling edge comes the timer uh, low timer order low and timer high is captured by one register say for example one capture register with the count is say count say 100 when the next falling edge comes when the next falling edge comes the second capture register captures the timer value at that time the timer value is 200 okay so the time interval between first falling edge and the second falling edge is second capture register content minus first capture register content hope you understand so the second capture register count value is 200 that means the second falling edge comes at the count 200 and the first falling edge comes at the count 100 so 200 minus 100 so the time interval between two falling edges is 200 so the time period of the pulse is 200 microsecond on by that 200 microsecond is equal to frequency this is how our function generator is displaying the frequency of our signal which is getting generated in the function generator by using the capture module this is how our oscilloscope 
our uh, mixer signal oscilloscope is displaying the corresponding frequency of the input signal if it is a digital oscilloscope it displays the frequency in uh, figures otherwise you have to compute right so finding the frequency is identified is possible by finding the time interval between two falling edge how to find the time interval between two falling edge capturing the first falling edge capturing the timer value during first falling edge through one capture register capturing the timer register value during the second falling edge subtracting the capture register 2 minus capture register 1 we can able to find out the period of the pulse so one inverting that will give the frequency of the pulse fantastic right okay so the capture modules are used to find out the period and the frequency of the signal compare modules are very much useful in producing the pulse width modulation so whenever the compare matches it produces a transition in the pwm part here in the capture module whenever the transition happens it captures the timer value that is only difference so capture module is an input from the pin compare module will gives the output to the pin so that is so beautiful right so we can say capture compare module here you see there is a comparator right? whenever the timer value matches the compare register value it produces a transition in the pin you can see it produces a transition in the pin so whenever there is a there is a timer value this is for this is how we produce pwm right the timer starts from zero goes up to some value timer goes up to the period value it goes up to overflow but whenever the compare register value matched with the timer register value it produces a transition in the pin as like how do you see so there is a compare register which produces a transition which is very much useful in producing pwm and there is a capture register which captures the timer value during transition in the pin so which help us to find out the very high frequency inputs so it is helping us to find the duty cycle of the pwm how you can say duty cycle of the pwm can be identified by the capture register pwm can be generated by using the compare register so fantastic right that's why capture compare registers are simply called as ccp you can see capture and compare register you can see everywhere you can see capture and compare module something like that you can see capture and compare register module so this is capture mode right whenever there is a transition in the pin and the edge will be detected so while the edge is detected you are capturing the timer value so during the falling edge one capture will happen during the rising edge second capture will happen based on the capture value you are able to identify the period from the period you can able to measure the frequency here there is a compare module which produces a transition in the pin normally we call it a ccp module which is capture compare module so now it can capture the running estimate of the velocity of the encoder will something that you can understand okay so quickly you see tm4c 123 gs 6p microcontroller includes two quadration encoder modules providing control of two motors at the same time with the following uh, features right position integrator that tracks the encoder position programmable noise filter in the inputs velocity capture using built in timer okay velocity capture using built in timer that we all know how to find the velocity by using built in timer just now we have seen by using the capture module we can able to find the velocity that is time interval between the one pulse and another pulse can be measured which is the displacement uh, which is the displacement displacement within the particular time is velocity that is what your speed of the vehicle that you need to understand so input frequency of the quadrature input may be as high as 1/4 of the processor frequency something like that uh, for example 12.5 mhz for a 50 mhz system something like that so in interrupt generation on index pulse whenever it reaches the index pulse it can generate an interrupt so velocity timer expiration so when the timer is over then it can generate an interrupt so when the whenever there is a change in direction it can interrupt the processor whenever there is a quarter inch error detection it can uh, do this so if you see the block diagram of quarter inch and quarter phase interfacing you can appreciate this so there are two phases why two phases on the, only through two phases we are able to find the direction of rotation that is what you have seen in that five videos which is very interesting right so this quarter inch encoder that output is given to the velocity accumulator and position integrator so velocity accumulator for the dc motor for finding the velocity by using the uh, count value and the uh, clock pulse capture module etc and the position integrator number of pulses which helps us to find the position with respect to the servo motor and the same output is given to the interrupt control where it can interrupt the microprocessor to notify the direction has changed in the motor or the speed is over speed or under speed or etc so the car is having the limited speed no all the vehicles are traveling only in 80 km per hour no this is just because 
the speed limiter is done by using some kind of uh, inter mechanism like this in the vehicle right so there is something like velocity timer which will help us to find out the velocity of the vehicle and there is a control and status register this is what you need to understand and there are so many features that you have to appreciate right this is this is the quadrature encoder interfacing internal block diagram and if you see the feature right if you observe carefully there are two xr gates right so when there are two xr gates then it is possible for us to invert the input signal okay it is possible for us to invert the input signal if you want to invert the phase a and if you want to invert the phase b signal so we can give it to the xr signal then the signal can be inverted so there is a possibility for us to invert the input signal so when we are interested to invert the input signal so we have to give it only through the xr gate as we are now very well right and there is something like swapping the signal right so a can be swapped to b b can be swapped to a uh, for the forward and reverse direction kind of things so these are all the provisions so swapping provision and uh, inverting the pulse position can also be available whenever needed we can make use of this resources with respect to the quadrature and quote interfacing and uh, these are all the pins right phase a pin and phase b pin and then index pin so when there is an index pin means if you press the button means it will reset the counter and it will start from that position when it is uh, servo motor kind of things okay so if you look at this it's very interesting right pulses from the rotary encoder is available like this as you see in our uh, video so phase a pulse is coming like this phase b pulse is coming like this so if phase b pulse goes from 0 to 1 first the phase b pulse goes to 0 to 1 first as we discuss already right if phase b pulse goes from 0 to 1 first then phase a pulse goes from 0 to 1 then you can say it is rotating in one direction so whenever the motor rotation direction changes whenever the motor rotation direction changes you can observe here please look at the screen look at the cursor you can observe here so phase a continues to be zero and phase a changes from zero to one then phase b changes from zero to one so on the phase a changes from zero to one first then phase b change from uh, zero to one then the direction has changes right If you observe here. Look at the screen. Look at the cursor. Phase B signal goes from zero to one, and phase A signal goes from zero to one, which is saying that the motor is rotating in one direction. Now you look at here. Phase A goes from zero to one, then phase B goes from zero to one. You can see the direction bit changes from one to zero. So this justifies um, motor is rotating in other direction. This direction things is not available in eighty fifty one. so by looking at the by using the interrupts we have identified uh, the falling edge time and the falling edge time of the two input signal and then we have made it this you could have observed in our video if not you can go and observe right in 8015 itself this is being done this direction bit tunnel is not available in 8015 so we have programmed it for the direction bits right and the equation can convert the velocity counter into rpm so there is a equation here we can find out the rpm of a motor by using this equation we can program this so automatically you can find the rpm so the clock into 2 into velocity divider value into speed into 60 and divided by the load into pulse per revolution into number of edges so using this we can able to identify uh, the rpm so there are some examples given right there are some examples given uh, for example consider the motor running at 600 rpm here there is an example which is given motor running at 600 rpm 2048 pulses per revolution quadrature and quadrant interfacing attached to the motor so producing 8192 phase edges per revolution with the velocity provider of divided by 1 and a clocking on both phase a and phase b edges this results in 81920 pulses per second if the timer were clocked at 10000 hertz and the load value was 2500 it would count 20480 pulses per update using the above equation we can able to find out rpm equal to 600 rpm by putting the corresponding value in the corresponding location you can able to if your application is motor control application that means whether it is position control or rpm control we can look into this much better else you can identify okay the, with the help of quadrature encoder interfacing we can able to measure the rpm of a motor or the position control of the motor by using the corresponding formula by using this facilities writing some four or five lines of code is more than enough but in our uh, rotary encoder uh, experiment that what i did with uh, 8051 with multiplexer seven segment display i have written some more than 20 30 lines just for this so this can be completed within five lines 
So maybe 25, so 60, 70 percentage of the coding complexity is reduced because of the presence of dedicated code reader encoder interfacing module. So there is a dedicated hardware like UEI, which helps us to do the computation in a more beautiful way. If not, we have to do it uh, with the help of software. That's what. So the thing what I did was with the software. Now, because there is a hardware available, so just like that, the rotary encoder input is given by using some formula like this. Easily, we can able to measure the speed and the direction of rotation as well as the position and lot more. That's all about this quadrature encoder interfacing in the DIVA microcontroller, which helps in finding the position of a servo motor as well as an RPM of the DC motor. In both servo motor and DC motor, it helps in finding the direction of rotation also because of two pulses coming in. So this is what the concepts that you have to remember. With this concept, whenever an application comes, you can very easily uh, do that application in a more beautiful way. So that's all for today.